Hi, this is Magnar, and welcome back to my modding tutorial series for Rome 2 Total War. In this episode, we're going to start venturing into the uh, area of battle mechanics. And this episode will be about the, the morale system. Uh, so let's get straight into it. And we're going to go into Data Rome 2 in our Rome 2 data folder. I've already got that open. And we're going to go into DB and down to Land Units. Okay, so now in land units we can scroll across and there will be a column here called morale. This value of morale is what is displayed in the game as base morale. It is not base morale, but in the game, uh, in vanilla of the game, uh, the stat display will say base morale and will have this value displayed in it. This is the morale actually this is actually not base morale, it is the morale which is additional to base morale. Um, the base morale is set somewhere else, which we're going to check out in a second. Okay, so this is where you can set your additional morale for all the different units. And if we go up top, we're going to go to this one here called KV Morale Tables. Underscore KV, underscore morale, underscore tables. Let's jump in there. And we're going to go to, uh, first up, to where the real base morale is set. So the real base morale is set here at row 24, morale base. The default, uh, the vanilla value is 30, which means that 30 is added to whatever morale uh, is added to the units, morale in land units. Uh, now these numbers on their own don't actually mean anything. It's all relative to the system which is in place. Uh, and the next stage of that system, uh, what, what that system is about is it, the amount of morale a unit has determines uh, when it routes, uh, when it's confident, eager, impetuous, uh, what are the other ones, wavering, shaken, all those things are just different levels of morale within the morale system. In this KV morale table is where we can set when each of those are actually triggered. So we come down to the bottom and we can look here at the UMS underscore and then all the ones here. Uh, we, this is where it's all set when those different levels of morale are triggered and, and come into play. Uh, you'll notice here that there's actually some crossover. So for instance, the steady threshold, the lower steady threshold, there's, there's an upper and a lower for each of them. So we've got upper here, lower, upper, lower. But uh, the, so shaken comes after steady. You can see that the shaken upper level is actually higher than the steady lower level. So it gives a bit of a crossover period between all the different um, levels. Another thing you'll notice here is that some of them are actually in percentages and some of them are in straight values. I'm not sure why they do it that way, but they do it that way. Uh, so the upper limit of each of them will determine uh, when that stage occurs. Uh, and of course, the lower limit determines when you, you go into the next stage. Um, now, when dealing with these KV tables, I highly recommend you open up your assembly kit while you're doing this because it is very helpful for one huge region, reason, and that is, if we open it up here, it gives you a description next to all every single one of these. It pretty much tells you what's what and kind of gives you a little idea of uh, how the t what the table does. Not all entries have it, uh, but most of them for the KV tables will have it have something written there. So you can see here the confident the upper upper threshold for confident is a percentage. I'm guessing that percentage is of the base morale, which is um, I'm not sure if it's the whole units morale, which is the base morale set in here plus the land units morale, or if it's just based on the morale in here. But uh yeah, it's a percentage of that. You can see the confident, eager, and impetuous. 
they're all in percentages, uh, and that's likely due to uh, even the steady upper threshold. That's probably because it's done as a percentage of the total morale of the unit, so the, the base morale plus the unit's morale. That's why they've gone to percentages. And when you get down to those lower uh, morale levels, you start getting to flat figures um, so that, yeah, just gives you a bit more, making a bit more specific. Um, so you can set when you want units to break. For instance here, units can break minus 30, 5, or you can change that and make that minus 5, minus 50. And you can change where those levels occur, when units will break, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the next part of the morale system is the morale effects. So what effects mor affects morale of the unit? Um, and how do you determine how much it affects it? And that's what all these other uh, entries here are for. And they're fa fairly um, self-explanatory when you look through the assembly kit and you look at the description. So you can see here you get a blood bonus for killing um, a certain percentage of a unit within a few seconds. Uh, here is, of course, how you affect how qu how quickly units can rally um, when they're broken and they go back to they they reform and that's set with this broken finish base base timeout. I'm guessing it's in seconds, a base number of seconds, which they need before they can start uh, gaining morale and um, coming back. So charge bonus. Now remember, all these are about morale. So this is not how much damage a unit does in charge. This is how much uh, morale uh, a unit gets when it's charging. So that charging units have a little bit of extra. This would be the probably second, I'm guessing, uh, when that boost to the charge morale uh, wears off. Units inside a fort, don't really need to worry about that. <laughs> I don't think it's, we don't have forts per se. Oh, we do, but I don't know if they actually have any effect, so I'm going to assume it doesn't work. It may work. Okay, what's this? Multiply apply to the defender's land strength before comparing to attacker strength. It controls land. Uh, this could be to do with uh, fighting in uh, enemy land. I'm not sure. I've not, I'm not, not tested this one out myself. I might actually... Uh, tested out after this tutorial. It's the first I've actually seen of it. I always skipped over it. So I'll skip that one, but I, it could be something to do with um, either attacking uh, on foreign territory or something like that. It'd be cool if it is. Okay, so we get down uh, the range. The range is in meters. Uh, it's an English, CA is an English based company. That's who, well not CA, but Rome too. Uh, was developed in England, so they use meters. It's not feet or y yards. Well, close to yards, but not. Um, then we get down to uh, casualties. There's a certain number of casualties per, uh, like it says here, 60 seconds, and the effect and morale impact of that. So if you want units to suffer less casualties, increase these values so that they will run away before they get significant damage. Uh, the, the fear effect, uh, the fear is a unit ability or attributes, sorry. If you're not familiar with attributes, there's a tu I've already done a tutorial on attributes, so you can go check that out. But fear is like what elephants do to infantry or, or horses, uh, and this is the range at which it is occurs, and will have a morale impact. Okay, then we've got some uh, fighting against cavalry. You get a, a negative to morale. Uh, general, again, this is in meters. The, the range of the general's, I guess it would be a morale improvement, uh, a boost to morale for nearby units of the general. Uh, then you have, if you have checked out two units fighting and you've actually hovered over a little while and seen all the different descriptors come out, like uh, units exhausted and um, winning combat, winning slightly, and also the level of morale, shake and confidence, etc. So that's these can actually have an impact on morale if you want them to. 
So that's where you set those. Uh, down further, they'll be winning, of course, if you go down here. Winning significantly, winning combat, blah, blah. Uh, we keep going down. What else have we got? Just going to go through quickly. Okay, the minimum increment per tick uh, is each time the morale is checked out again, you can change what's the, uh, the minimum level for it to actually have an effect. So you could say that's 10, for instance. I don't want to have it as 10, but uh, if you make that as 10, it means if, if the unit has had a morale shock which is less than 10, then it won't really take effect. Only things above that will take effect. I think one's a good... I'm not sure if you can go less than one there either. You might be able to go less than one. Let's have a look at the schema. Uh, value single. I'm not sure. Probably, you probably can't go less than one. Uh, you can try it out though if you like. Maybe it works. Did that touch? We've already done morale base. Don't need to do that again. Uh, neighbor effect range is, of course, the range at which, when you have units who, um, encouraged by having having their flanks covered or having troops in the rear and all that kind of stuff, that's what this refers to. So they have to be within 160 meters for that kind of thing to take effect. Uh, this is vanilla, of course, you can change it. Um, same kind of thing where, they, where the unit says, oh, it's, it's uh, concerned about expo exposed flanks. Uh, this is the range, again, of where that tech comes in. The I data, okay, this is like the uh, tick thing up here as well, but more in a percentage term. And here we go, we have, so up here we have that casualties in the last 60 seconds. If we come down here, we have casualties in the last four seconds. Has an additional uh, morale impact to those done within 60 seconds. Okay, and some other stuff to do with that. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to go over that. Um, this is to do probably with uh, routing units affecting other units uh, and causing the whole army to route. Again, more casualty stuff, same as these ones I've already looked at above. But this is to do with the total casualties as opposed to in a certain period of time. Okay, and then we've got the UME, morale effect, concerned of army destruction. So this is when you had a lot of casualties, you get a huge morale impact. You can have morale impacts from, yep, projectiles, such as arrows and such, or from artillery, they are different. If the captain, the officer unit dies, you can have a small, you can have an impact as well. Actually hit by artillery. Elephants. This morale hit here probably tied in with the um, the attribute of the elephants. It'll be hard code linked. Uh, now here we get down. This is the first one here. Different levels of exhaustion can have different impacts on morale. So we have here exhausted. There is also uh, tired, very tired. Uh, is there anything else? Ins inspired. No, that's something else, isn't it? Uh, okay, UME. So it's just those two. It's the lower lower end. So they got tired, no winded. UME winded. Nope, no winded. Okay, so tired and very tired and exhausted are the ones that we have. That you can. If, that's when morale can impact the unit. If you want to add that. Okay, so you got morale effects when you have. Single unit and multiple unit on the on the flanks. Uh, general dead. Yeah, these are all. Like I said, these are all uh, self-explanatory. This is good, interesting to see, is that you have different morale impacts for the AI when they lose their general and the uh, player, because it, I, we know, all know that the AI likes to charge their general into the in, in the at the front at the very start of the battle and get killed. So you can kind of uh, limit the impact that has relative to the. Uh, effect of that of the player using his losing his general. And there's some more stuff here about general dying and fleeing and relative. Of course, they've got the same thing with versus AI and player. Um, okay, some more stuff tied in with attributes or abilities. 
Knight battles is also kind of interesting to have. So you can have a morale impact when your general has a knight battle uh, ability or skill, but the enemy general doesn't. Okay, so there's all those frightened, flank secure, fortification. These are all pretty self-explanatory. When you have the high ground, fighting in the middle of the city, so last line of defense, if you want to make your units like in the old vanilla Rome 1 games, fight to the death in the middle of the city, you can just increase that number to a large amount so they get a huge bonus to morale right at the end. We did all the UMS stuff already, that was okay, and then we have stuff here. This is to do with when a unit is, uh, of course, attacked in the front, rear or flank, and having morale impacts on that. Some mods have it so you have to charge a number of times into the rear of units to get them to route, so that's uh, tied into here. You can just increase that to make them route after one charge if you like. Uh, winning combat already did. Okay, so this again is in seconds. Um, when a unit starts to waver, you see it starts flashing a bit, uh, and it stays. This is how long it stays in that. And that's pretty much all there is to morale. I don't want to say that. All right, so uh, thanks for watching, and uh, in the next episode, I'll probably start getting into more battle mechanics kind of st side of things, uh, and we'll enter into the. KV rules table. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.